Hey guys, good morning. How's everybody doing today? I'm from Kansas City. Who's been to Kansas City? Come on. It's a great town, right? Patrick Mahomes, MVP. That's right. Um, yeah, so I started this company about 12 years ago with the other co-founder, Michelle. Um, all we've done really throughout our history is marketing analytics. So over the years, I can tell you, I have jacked up a lot of stuff. And so this title is very near and dear to my heart because I'll start off with this. We in marketing, we do great things. How many of you would agree with that? Come on. Yes or no? Yes. We do. The problem is, is that how do we demonstrate that value? Do we do a great job of it? No. We suck at it. Let's be honest. And there's many reasons why we're not very good at it, and I'm going to break those down for you today. My hope is... My hope is, is that you come out of here with at least some strategies and some ideas on how to better tell your value story. How many of you are with an agency today? All right, awesome. How many of you of those agencies would you like to have your clients understand that what you're doing is really valuable? Not all the hands went up. Why are you in business? <laughs> what about brands? Yep. Cool. How would you like to be able to demonstrate the value of what marketing is doing within the organization within your role? Agencies, take note. <laughs> so why aren't we better at this, right? So let's start with this, um, like any good analytics um, story, right? Well, two things. Number one, my marketing team makes me wear this, so I apologize. This is terrible. Um, the second thing is, uh, feel free to tweet at me. Um, I, I'm very active on Twitter um, during these shows, so I'm happy to, to respond and help out in any way I can. And that's really my goal. My goal is to educate, teach tell you all the things I've jacked up and hopefully you get some new ideas coming out of this thing. So here's a stat for you. The, basically the share of projects using marketing analytics before a decision is made. And the concept here is, and this, this slide's a little bit dated, I'm getting ready to update it. The concept here is, is that in 2012, 37% of us said that we use data before we make decisions. Let's think about that for a minute. You guys tracking with me? Well, guess what? It's only gotten worse. <laughs> Why is that? So if you think about it, only about a third of us admit, only about a third of us admit to using data before we start spending our money. Huh. Feels good, right? Why is that? Give me some ideas. Why is that happening? You don't have the data. You don't have the data. What else? You don't believe in it. What else? What is it? It's gut feeling. It's not actionable. What else? What is it? You don't know what the hell you're looking at. Too much of it. Right? So you have all of these things. How many of you would agree with all of those things that you just heard? Absolutely. These are all real challenges. And so here's something to think about, right? So here's our friend. Let's all take a look at it. We know what it is. So on the left, you have basically all of these sources, TV, radio, print, right? Right? Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, AdWords, Bing, all of these things, right? All of these sources. So what do we do as marketers? What's our first job when it comes to analytics? That's right. We pull data. Shit, yeah. <laughs> right? And then what do we do? We take that data. We power pivot our way to freedom. Right? We, do it, we, we assemble it, and then we get crazy, and what do we do next? Well, we build some charts. Yeah? This all makes sense. Then where does it go? What do we do next? Into a presentation. <laughs> so into our PowerPoint, right? And this is where data goes to die, and you hope to God what? What is the one thing you hope for when you go through this process? No questions! My God, please don't ask me any questions. I got 82 slides to get through. Shut your mouth, Hank. Right? Because you know, you know deep down that, that what? If you get asked a question, you got to go back through this gauntlet again, right? So we oftentimes come out of meetings like this poor little dude going down the slide. We're like, oh, yeah, I got a great PowerPoint. Look at guys. Oh, oh wait, no, son of a, stop asking questions. 
How many of you felt like this little guy, right? Like, God dang it. Oh, I watch this all the time. This makes me happy. Poor little guy. So, keeping with this theme, right? So why? Why does this happen? If you look at this chart down here below, it says lack of people who can link it to, a, to our marketing practice and lack of process and tools. So if you think about it, people, process, technology, these are the core things that ultimately make or break our success in, in implementing an analytic strategy. I come to these shows all the time. I speak all over and I, I work with a lot of brands and agency owners throughout the country. And I will tell you a lot of times in shows like this, somebody will come up and, and say, well, that's all good, Matt, but can you help me understand how to do a union statement? Or can you help me understand what a left join is and a right join is? And can you help me figure out what's, how to code this? And I'm like, what is your job? Well, I'm a media buyer. Well, then why the hell are you trying to learn how to code? How many of you are familiar with that? How many of you had to learn how to figure out how to write the most badass VLOOKUP that anybody's ever seen in their life, right? And we take those spreadsheets and we hoard them like the Holy Grail. Don't you touch my spreadsheet. I'll kick your ass, right? So that's real. So there's three things that make us not very good. This is why we aren't very good. These are three barriers to success. Number one, we view analytics as a project. And I'm going to pick on agencies here for a minute. Agencies are notoriously bad at this. You guys do great work, right? You work hard for your clients. Your clients trust you with the money. And at the end of the day, you get tasked by your agency owner to say, oh, yeah, we need some of that dashboard stuff. Hey, Matt, can you work on that at night? Well, I'm already doing seven things because I work at an agency, right? So we treat it as a project. Brands do the same thing as, instead of an organization-wide strategy, regardless of the size of your organization, whether you're a Fortune 100 company or a mid-sized agency or a small agency, it doesn't matter. You have to look at this the right way. That's, that's problem number one. Problem number two is we choose a technology solution that doesn't scale, right? So we as marketers, we love what? We love pretty things. Let's just be honest. Well, that's a pretty dashboard. Oh, that's, oh, that's so easy. I'm just going to buy that. Let's just go, yeah, boom, clickety-click. Mm, that magic data fairies. No. Right? And so then we're six months into it. We're like, man, this is harder than I thought, and this, this tool ultimately isn't going to take me to where I need to go. So we, we don't have a long-term view. And the last thing is we have people doing the wrong thing. We aren't equipping the right people to do the right job. My, my point about you trying to learn how to code in Excel and write macros and, and all this other stuff, the, the reality of it is every ounce of energy you're, you're learning how to code as a marketer is time that you are not, listen to me, time you are not spending your organization's money wisely. Does that make sense? Stings a little bit, but it's true. So let's take these things and break them apart, right? So these are the things that I want to teach you, and these are the hard lessons that I've learned over the years. Number one, so how do we look at an organization-wide strategy? Well, I'm going to teach you the four levels of marketing analytics. There's really four basic levels that I'm going to teach you today. The second thing is there's, there's five technology families, right? And, you know, we have a marketing intelligence platform. If you want to come by and talk to us, that, that's, that's awesome. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to break down what that ecosystem looks like because guess what? My platform or any other piece of software isn't right for everybody. It's just not. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what those tools are and you can figure out what makes the most sense for you. And then lastly, the six roles. So all of these things tie together, right? So all of these things build together. So let me break these down for you. When you think about the four levels of marketing analytics, many of us were over here. At the very end of the spectrum, we are doing the data death march. We are gathering data. We're putting it into Excel and praying to God nobody asks us any questions. Is that right? So level one, basically, is I just need to automate some of these data streams. I need to eliminate step one. I need to get out of manually pulling data. I mean, for God's sake, stop doing it. That's just basic level one, is get me out of that process. Level two, I start now to look cross-channel, cross-campaign. You with me? I know nobody has any arguments about the value of AdWords versus display versus TV. I know that everybody just walks in, oh yeah, it's all good, no. 
But you have to look cross-channel, cross-campaign in order to understand holistic performance. That's level two. Level three gets into attribution, right? What are the values of these channels? So if I'm spending $100,000 in TV and I'm, a lead, I'm trying to drive leads, what's the value of TV in that strategy? All right, so that's level three. And then level four is predict. So I want to be able to, before I even start a campaign, if I have $100,000, $10,000, $1 million, $100 million, I want to be able to understand and expect the return on that investment before I ever start. Does that make sense? So we like to talk about things like AI and predictive and all these other things, and we, we're really good at using those in sentences. And I have people call me every week and say, hey, oh, Matt, I want a predictive model that tells me this. And I'm like, sweet, love it. Tell me about your data ecosystem. Well, I got all this stuff. Well, I can't give it to you, right? I can't give you that if you're all the way over here tomorrow. Can I get you there? Absolutely. Now, here's the thing about this. The left side, level one, level two, is simply reporting. We confuse this term analytics all the time. Level one, level two is simply what happened. Level three, level four is telling me what to do. That's when, that's when analytics becomes an asset to you. Now, can I create visibility and do some better things over here? Absolutely. But too often, we get stuck right here, and we think, oh, we solved it. Not true. Does this make sense? All right, let's go. So there's five types of analytics solutions out there. Number one, there's what I call connector tools. So, so these tools are, hey, I want to set up my AdWords and my, my Facebook and things that have nice, clean APIs, right? And so I can have it push data and pull data for me. Supermetrics, funnel, you guys familiar? Anybody seen these tools? So that's the job of a connector tool. It just allows me to try and automate some of this data stream. The second tool is, is what I call a dashboard tool. So NinjaCat, TapClicks, these are tools that not only pull data into a stream, but they'll stick it into a visualization live, right? So the idea is, is that I have a dashboard that's connected to something like Google Analytics or Facebook, and the data is just streaming together. So that's a dashboard tool. So all I'm doing is pulling data and putting it in a dashboard. Make sense? Third thing is, is kind of the hybrid tool world, right? So the improvados of the world, Google Data Studio lives here. And what I start to do is I start to move from this stream to actually store data in some fashion. And that's really, really important because I'm going to tell you this. How many of you do cross-channel campaign tracking? None of you have ever screwed it up, have you? <laughs> if you don't have a place to land that data, you can't fix it. Does that make sense? You stick it in your Excel spreadsheet as logic that you build a gate around. That's not fixing it. So the hybrid tools in this next set, um, in terms of single stack tools, really apply the idea of I'm landing my data into some place to store it, and then I have a visualization stack on top of it. Make sense? So we call these single stack hybrid tools. And then the last one is, is really, a, um, I always say best in breed, and my logo's up there. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, is that it's, a, it's an, a, a strategy that basically says I want each element of my technology stack to be excellent at what it does. So on the left, all of my data is stored in a highly scalable, highly maintained data warehouse environment, right? And what I can do is I can take that data and I can layer tools on top of it, things like Tableau or, or Looker or Power BI. All of those tools are reliant on good data structure. Those tools are the best storytelling tools that we have, however. So they far better than the, the visualizations that you have up there. However, if you want to leverage those tools, how many of you use any Tableau Power BI? I've been using Tableau since version 4, because I'm old. You don't even know what version 4 is. Like, God, I thought they just started with the year. No. So one thing that I found out, one of the very first mistakes that I made when I bought Tableau in 2009, I was like, oh, it's Tableau, it's pretty, it's going to save my life. Three days into it, I was about ready to throw my laptop into the street because I didn't have the data structured in the right way, which is really the genesis of where Channel Mix came from. So those are the five families, okay? And then lastly the, are these roles. So this is a grid, right? So technology expertise, business expertise, strategy from a business perspective, technology strategy. Upper left, strategists. How many strategists do we have in here? You want to use data to make buying decisions. Just a few of you. 
What do you guys do on a daily basis? <laughs> I work for a nonprofit. It's so amazing. We pet cats. <laughs> Sorry, I love cats. So, strategist, right? So you're in the upper left quadrant, data-driven marketer. You want to use analytics to drive results. The second role that I'm telling you is probably the most underrated role, whether you're an agency, whether you're a brand. As you start to use analytics and as you start to try to get from level two to level three to level four, you are going to need someone to help you break down political, cultural barriers. It happens every single time, whether it's with a client, well, Frank won't give us the data. Well, why not? Well, Frank lives at home with his mom. Nobody knows what Frank does, but he guards the data. I need the data, right? So you're going to have to have an influencer to help you overcome some of those things. Down in the bottom right, you have the analyst. The analyst's job is to tell the story. How many of you play the analyst role? How many of you so far are playing more than one role? Here we go. And we have the data scientist. Right, so the data scientists, how many of you are data science people? Awesome. The number one question I always get is, well, Matt, I need a resource, so the first person I'm gonna hire is a data scientist, and I always go, huh? Why would you hire a data scientist when you don't have any data to science? <laughs> no, no offense, data scientists are extremely critical. I have them on my team. But the reality of it is, is you have to have a data set, otherwise you have a highly paid, highly intelligent person just working in Excel, that's dumb. Over here, you have the data engineer. The data engineer is that person who understands what a union statement is, left join, right join, they understand SQL, right? And then you have basically a, a data architect or a solution design person. So as you scale, and as you get more sophisticated, you need somebody that understands the design of what you want to accomplish from a data and technology perspective to help you. Six roles. How many of you now play more than one role? More than two roles, it's okay, it's a safe room. We can admit it. This is a significant reason why marketing analytics fails right here. All right, so let me bring this together. So level one reporting, as I was talking about, right? Level one reporting is I'm just automating stuff. So I can take tools and I can push it automatically into a Google Sheet, into Excel, and the idea is that I want charts and tables connected with sheets. I just want to automate something. Please help me, right? So when we think about level one, here's the tool stack, and then here's the people that you're gonna need. If you simply want to, and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you some homework, I'm gonna tell you what that homework is right now. At the, end of this, at the end of this session, I'm gonna give you a 90 day challenge. And my challenge to you is in 90 days, you need to move one level, that's it. You need to figure out how you can, as an organization, move one level. Make sense? So, if I just want to start here, which is awesome, I'm going to need an analyst and I'm going to need a strategist. If you're a super small company, less than 10 people, you're going to have to play both those roles. If you're a 100 person company or a 1,000 person company, my God, separate the roles. That's level one. Level two, so these things build on each other, right? So now I'm looking cross channel, cross campaign. That's one of our Tableau templates. And the idea is that channel conversion, media mix, I have a single dashboard. Here's another piece of homework that I'll give you. If you are going in to present results on a campaign or the value of marketing, here's my challenge to you. Five minutes, one page. If you have five minutes to tell that story, what does it look like in one page? Does that make sense? Five minutes, one page. We as marketers, we like to start at the bottom and swim upstream like we're salmon. Oh, well, let me tell you about this keyword that performed really well. Okay. <laughs> Didn't perform quite as well in Bing, no, because nobody looks at Bing. You're like, what? So your CEO is 10 minutes into the presentation, like, what the hell are you even talking about? Did I make money or not? That's the five minute challenge. Five minutes, one page. So this is level two. So if you just want to get to level two and don't want to go further, these are some of the tools that you can use. And oh, by the way, now I just added somebody, a data engineer. Most often, tools in this sector break down because of that data engineer role. You know why? Because they are quote unquote self-service tools and you are responsible for managing the data, managing the connections, doing the design, doing all of the things that we're trying to get you out of. There's nothing wrong with these tools, just understand that that's the reality of them. Okay? Awesome. So, level three, let's build on this thing, right? So now I'm looking 
cross-channel, cross-campaign, and now I'm getting into attribution. And here's the point, guys. If I solve for level three, I get level one and level two because I have to have it. These things build on each other. If I want to start here, if I want to get to here in the next 90 days, in the next 180 days, you're going to get level one and level two because it's required to do these things, which is media and, um, media and campaign ROI, understanding real value at the channel and spend level, and doing attribution modeling. This is, a, this is foundational. If you aren't doing this, how many of you are doing this today well? How many of you feel like you're really doing this today well? A few of you, right? And sometimes we like to feel like it, but we as marketers, we have to get here. I don't care if it's in 90 days or in two years. My point is, if you aren't doing this, you're not spending, you're not being good financial stewards of your organization's dollars. And the second thing is, your competition's starting to do it. So that's just real talk. Real talk with Matt this morning. All right? All right, here's the last thing um, as it relates to level three. So I've tried to shortcut this thing a million ways. I'm lazy. I like vodka. I've tried to shortcut this thing, and you can't. And it's the whole concept of probably my biggest learning has been, I need something. If you have the ability to do it in-house, find another platform, you want to talk about us, that's great. I need an intelligence platform that allows me to take this data, store it, mold it, shape it, and then tell a story. And if I do that, I can start using attribution. I can use things like R and Python and all these other things in this same stack. Now, you're going to need a couple more people. Okay, you're going to need a couple more people from the standpoint of if I want to be level three, I'm going to need some solution design expertise and I'm going to need an influencer because I'm going to need more data. I'm going to need to get access to data that you may not have access to today. And that is absolutely critical. All right, level four. Now we are Jedis. We are all powerful, all knowing. This is where we should all strive to be. This is a real dashboard. Basically, it's Predicting response based on DMA and, and certain geos uh, for a brick and mortar store. And the concept is really awesome because I can see it and I can see this every day, right? And don't, this is a pet peeve of mine. Is, is this data real time? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I mean, is it, is it real time? No. It loads every night and you see it the next day. But that's not real time. Do you make decisions in real time? Like literally, like every five minutes you're making a decision on, well, no. Well, then why the fuck do you need the data real time? <laughs> Sorry. So my point is, right, so this is level four. Right, I'm out where I need to be. And so before I even ask for more money from the CMO, if you give me a million dollars, guess what? I'm gonna give you two and a half million back. Take my money. That's what level four does. But to do it, right, you're going to have to understand modeling tools. The, the awesome part about this, and this was a learning, this wasn't by design because I'm not that smart, is I could leverage that same data stack and that same visualization stack and simply just add some modeling tools to it to get me to level four. And the last thing is this is where I activate my data scientist. This is where I really unleash and get ROI on, on a data scientist's role. And guess what? They're going to be fulfilled. They're actually going to be swimming in data. They're going to be able to swim around and see the, see the signals that we can't see which is what a data scientist should be able to do. All right, where are we going as an industry? So this is from the CMO survey. If you don't know what the CMO survey is, you can Google it. Um, it's taken every six months, uh, February, August. Um, August isn't, for 2019 isn't out yet. But basically this is what we say. What we're saying as an industry is that we're finally getting serious about investments in this space. We are tired of spending money and pissing money away and not getting a result, which is why a third of us only still use data to make decisions that actually admit it. So this is a huge jump, right? Expect to spend 11.3% of marketing budgets on analytics, a 68% increase, 68% increase, significant increase. So this is another statistic that you need to be thinking about, whether you're an agency or a brand, it's time to get real. It's time to start using data to make decisions on where you're going, what you're doing, and um, be able to demonstrate the real value of what marketing does. So here's what I want you to do. In the next two years, don't look at it in two months, four months, two days, four days, 24 months. In the next two years, which I get is a long time. 
but I want you to look out and say that today, today I use Excel and PowerPoint. In two years, I want to be able to do what? That could be, I just want cross-channel, cross-campaign reporting in a single-page dashboard. I can walk in, done. Awesome. Guess what? You can probably get there in about six months, probably less, maybe three months, and you can let that run. If you're an agency or brand and you want to be out to level three or level four, you have to start creating sections on how you're going to get there in the next 24 months. We help agencies and brands get there in about a year. It just takes that long, sometimes longer. Uh, but that's the reality of it. You can't have a predictive and attribution model tomorrow if you don't have any data. You gotta get organized, you gotta build, and the number one thing as you are building the strategy, if you are tasked to finding out how to build an analytic strategy in the organization, there's, there's one thing that is your friend, one thing, and it's momentum. You have to get momentum, because as a strategy, you're going to be, you're gonna have a critical eye looking at it. Well, I'm investing money. Is it working? How is this changing? Right? The organization becomes hypercritical on it. So momentum is your friend. But when it happens, it exponentially changes how you think about spending dollars. It exponentially changes, as importantly, the value that marketing is delivering to an organization. Because you're having a quantitative conversation, not about how pretty is the creative, and, and those things are important, don't get me wrong. But the reality of it is, is dollars and cents. At the end of the day, we as marketers have to be able to speak dollars and cents. All right, so here's four things that I want you to do. Get on a whiteboard, right? So I have, I always, I always use this as an example. I have a brand that I've worked with for five years. They have a marketing team, and they have a marketing communications team. Five years ago, I walked in and I said, so what do you do? Well, we do the website. We do the media. Okay. What do you guys do? Well, we do direct mail and email. Okay. Do you guys talk? No. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you're sending out messages about a particular product or service. You're trying to promote, talk about a particular product or service, and you guys don't talk. Why would we? It's different. <laughs> Is it? Well, yeah, because this is one-to-one, -one and this isn't. Is it? <laughs> right? So, look, I'm a prospect or a customer. I don't care. What I'm hearing is multiple messages. I'm getting multiple messages. They need to be consistent. They need to be in a cadence and aligned to a campaign strategy, which means that I've got to identify all of the data that I'm being used in my ecosystem today. I don't care if it's CRM, paid search. It doesn't matter. Get on a whiteboard and list them all. Invite your friends. If you're like, if you're like, uh, if your company's like a light analytics, you just say, yeah, I'm bringing liquor. Everybody shows up. They're not even part of the meeting. Right? So everything you're using in your ecosystem, identify the data source volume and velocity. How big is your data and how fast do you need it to go? Third thing is, based on the level you want, identify the resources, the people that are going to be responsible for this. And then the last thing is identify what level you are now. And as I said, commit to where you want to get to in the next 90 days. This is the only slide that I have to talk about us. Um, as I said, we built a platform, a marketing intelligence platform that does go the entire spectrum because I tried to cheat it for 12 years. So if you want us to talk about this, I'm happy to share this with you. We're right outside the door. Uh, the other thing that's significant about our platform, though, is you don't have to do this on your own. I give you data people. I give you analysts and data scientists if you don't have those in your organization. Because I firmly believe that the fundamental reason why analytics breaks down is because we cannot harness the power of data. Because it's hard. So you have to solve that problem. If you solve the data problem, all of this becomes activatable. Right? So if you want to learn more, stop by and talk to us. There's a shallow old shot of our booth. So I'm out of time. I want to thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your session here in Tampa, and I appreciate it.